Hey guys, what's up? It's Rachel here live again from Miami, beautiful Miami. And we had so much fun at Bitcoin 2021. Today we're doing a wonderful AMA with Superbid. And I'm joined by Max. He's the COO of Superbid. Hey, Max, how's it going? Hey, Rachel, it's going very well. Uh, like yourself, we are having a great time here in Miami. Um, currently in the hotel. Uh, last night was one of the most insane nights of our lives and I'm super happy to be here. Yeah, Max. So, I mean, before we start talking about Superbid, I want to know, um, did you watch the fight last night, first of all? Of course I did. I was on the floor, front row. Obviously. Right, right. <laughs> so we should just let our, let our uh, audience members know that Superbid sponsored the fight last night. Correct, Max? Correct. We were Logan Paul's lead sponsor. Right. So what exactly does that mean? Well, that means that I, I, for all of you that are watching this and are not familiar with what we're doing as, as a team, um, Superbid is an influencer auctioning app. So it's a place where influencers can go to auction off experiences, physical goods, and NFTs. Uh, so for us, Logan Paul made perfect sense to be a partner with us for purposes of utility on the app. When we realized that he was fighting Floyd Mayweather, we figured we haven't launched a global campaign yet. This could be the perfect time to solidify and crystallize ourselves as a brand in this entire influencer and cryptocurrency space. So when we partnered with Logan, we not only were able to sponsor his fight, but we also received a number of different auctions that we will be launching partnered with Logan on the app once it's on the, the app store, obviously. Right. Very cool. So yeah, this is a really unique concept. I think, I think it's awesome because you guys are working with influencers like Logan. Um, what exactly was auctioned off last night? Because I know you guys sponsored the event and he was wearing super big clothes. Was that, was that mm -hmm. something that was auctioned off via the platform? No, not yet. He is auctioning off some, uh, merch from the fight. He uh -huh. wants to keep the shorts because he wants to give them to his kids in the future because this was a very important fight for him. Um, but we were thinking his, ro his robe or some other article of clothing. Um, but the more important part with Logan's auction is that what he will be doing is doing an experience where he's flying someone out to Puerto Rico. They're going to spend a day in their life together. They're going to be doing you know parties. They're going to go to lunch. Whatever that person that wins the auction wants, um, Logan's going to plan it all. So. That is one of the unique capabilities of Superbit is that it's not just like, you know, a regular eBay where it's an auctioning platform. It's also a place where you can create a social media plat like background, a profile, like Logan Paul can create a profile for himself. He can run an auction. He can do not only just a physical good like his robe or like his shorts, he can do an experience. So that's where the uniqueness of Superbit really comes into play. Right. Yeah. It, it's super unique and it sounds awesome. I also was reading that, um, influencers can auction off NFTs as well as like mm -hmm. these experiences and other things. Um, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So an example that I like to give is let's say that we have uh, Floyd Mayweather as a partner, right? What he can do with us is record a video of himself signing his boxing gloves that he will be auctioning off on the app. Mm -hmm. um, he can convert that video into an NFT. And then whoever wins the actual auction for the boxing gloves receives the NFT pair as almost additional validation on top of the boxing gloves, the signed boxing gloves that it did come from him. And they have this really cool memorabilia that they can share for, you know, forever to their kids, to their grandkids. Um, so that's kind of super good in a nutshell. Got it. Very cool. Before we go into some more questions, I just want to remind the audience members, please send us your questions in the chat. Um, this is a really cool platform. Max is totally happy to answer all of your questions and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, okay, great. So Max, um, I want to talk a little bit more about Superbid. So you mentioned that it's not live in the app store yet. Is that correct? Right. Right now we're going through a private alpha testing phase. So we have, mm -hmm. um, some developers that are reviewing the platform and we have some of our team members that are reviewing the platform. We plan on executing a public alpha launch soon within the next month or so um, okay. so that our community members, our you know, family members, they can go out and test the app. And then right now we're going through this whole discovery phase while simultaneously building the app. So we are approaching things a little bit different than a normal startup developing a product. We are doing simultaneous marketing while we're developing an app, while we're learning about what we really need to implement within the app, because we want to leverage the current hype around crypto. We want to leverage the current hype around influencers. 
and there's no time to waste. So it's not, we're not following a path where it's step one, you do this, then step two, you do this, then step three, you do this. We're right. following different simultaneous paths. And the reason why we're able to do that is because our company, Escape Velocity, is a blockchain development firm. And mm -hmm. we have 20 developers currently dedicated to Superbid that are working on this project, mm -hmm. myself, a number of marketing uh, members as well. And we're able to just balance a bunch of things at the same time. We're very mm -hmm. close, so we're constantly communicating. And we're meeting on almost a daily basis to do customer discovery, to refine our plan. Because if you do have a set strategy or a set plan as a crypto company, there are always changes that come into play. And we're agile with those changes. We need to be because we're a startup. Um, and the solution is communication. So while we are releasing the product, the final product in three months, the main reasons are around three months, the main reason why we're doing that is because we are constantly learning new information. I mean, right. you'd be surprised when we meet with an influencer, sometimes they have amazing ideas and we think of that and we think, oh, wow, this could be interesting to explore, interesting mm -hmm. to incorporate within the app. When we initially launched, we had a very basic idea of what we wanted, to, wanted it to be, a social engaging app for influencers to run auctions. Then we expanded into NFTs, so we're working on that. Then we decided, okay, we should have a way for influencers to actually communicate with their fans while these auctions are running. So we have now an added like chat layer aspect to that. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, because our company has developed a live streaming platform in the past, what if we can incorporate a live streaming platform within the app itself? And then we said, this is the key, because if we can access the great benefits of TikTok combined with, you know, the benefits of eBay, and then we add some steroids, that's giving you super bit. So it's kind of where we are right now in our roadmap. Right. Okay. Very cool. So a question that comes to my mind is, um, all of this sounds awesome, but what is the blockchain element and the decentralization piece of all of this? What makes it different from something like Instagram, for instance, where influencers, mm -hmm. you know, have something similar, they have a similar platform, obviously Superbid sounds much more um, advanced and just more awesome in general, but where's the decentralization aspect of all of this? Thank you for that. We're trying to be super awesome, better than Instagram, um, but we're not trying to compete with them. It's, it's very simple how we're integrating things with the blockchain. We are using, the reason why we have a token, a cryptocurrency, is so that we can use it on the app. That's all it is. People will be able to connect their credit cards and with the money that they spend within the app, that's converted to tokens that are in their balance and then they can participate in auctions on the app with those tokens. And that's it. We don't, it doesn't matter, you know, your age, your, your gender, like crypto doesn't care about that stuff. So you can come in, you either buy it from the website, you can buy it from one of the exchanges we're listed on, and you participate in an auction. That's all it is. We are thinking about implementing some more unique characteristics, potentially some burning mechanisms, potentially some incentives for people that do hold the token, such as if you hold a token, you're more likely to actually, as an influencer, you're more li likely to actually appear on the front page of the app, almost okay. like a Google ad. Uh -huh. You pull up TikTok, pull up TikTok, TikTok, thinks that they know what you want to look at, right? So they put a bunch of uh, dedicated, targeted content in front of your face. We don't want to do that. We want it to be like, if Logan Paul holds X number of tokens, then he can be on the front page of the app itself. And similar yeah. for, in, for, for, uh, for users. If you're mm -hmm. a user, you actually, at, for holding the token, will have the ability to chat directly with uh, an influencer and you mm -hmm. pay them in that token. So there are a bunch of unique gamification aspects that we're trying to incorporate in this. It's not just you use it for bids within the app. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as you know, our plan is agile. We're constantly adding on to it. And we're just super excited to you know, be giving you information as, as, long, as we go. Got it. And the super bid token, is, is that just called super bid? Correct, right here, uh -huh. right here, super bid. Awesome, cool, cool. <laughs> and then what? which exchanges is it listed on? Primarily, the highest volume exchange is Uniswap, decentralized mm -hmm. exchange. But we recently okay. listed on Bit. We recently listed on Bitcoin.com. There's actually a fifteen thousand dollar trading tournament on that for whoever wins. Okay. And then we're listed on HitBTC as well. Okay. And I would say that those are the three large ones. You can also go to our website and and right there, and it'll be in which we're listed. Got it. Okay, cool. So 
Do you need to hold tokens in order to use the app? I mean, when the app is launched, if I download it and I don't have any super bid tokens, can I still get on the app and, and have features that I can use? Yes, you want to make it as accessible as possible to the mainstream. So all of the blockchain is going to be happening in the background. You don't need to know how to use Uniswap in order to participate in the Superbit ecosystem. That's uh -huh. why the credit card connectivity becomes key, is that when you do buy tokens with the credit card to, for use within the app, they almost function as you know Fortnite points or Minecraft points, a typical in-game currency. That's the whole idea of this. So. It's not just going to be uh, crypto people that are involved in this. We're trying to access, you know, 13 year olds, 10 year olds, not because it's a way to make money, just because this is a way we know that these are, this is the demographic, which participates in activities like this with influencers. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a 13 year old who finds out about their favorite gamer is doing an auction on Superbid, they're going to want to connect their credit card. They're going to want to use the app itself. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Just a reminder to the audience, please send us your questions. This is extremely interesting. I mean, it's it sounds like such an awesome platform. Um, my next question is, do you have to be an influencer? I mean, what what do you consider an influencer and how, yeah, how do you reach influencer status in order to be featured as the influencer on Superbid? So that's the unique thing about this is that anyone can be an influencer. Um, you can have a hundred followers. You can have a hundred million followers like Logan Paul. If there is demand for something that you own, then you can auction it off on Superbid. Whether you have a hundred or a hundred or a hundred million. Um, the definition of an influencer is obviously loose. We TikTok exists. And when TikTok came out, TikTok didn't say you have to meet certain criteria in order to be an influencer. You have to meet certain criteria in order to get a certain amount of views. That's not what we want to do. We want whoever to come run an auction on our app. And if it's successful, and if they're actually getting demand for their items and they're making money, then they're gonna come back because everyone's happy. Got it, very cool. Okay, great. I'm gonna take a question from an audience member. They're asking, what other top tier exchanges are you planning to be listed on? Uh, I can't disclose too much information about that, but we are planning on listing one on one that is uh, within the top 10 on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. Cool, okay. And then just another comment from an audience member. They're just saying, this sounds like V-Bucks and Fortnite. Uh, that's actually a case study that we did. We looked into V-Bucks for Fortnite, um, but it's obviously uh, not not the same because you use their in-game currency simply for, you know, uh, for, for things within Fortnite itself, for, for skins, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so while it does function similar to an in-game currency, it's different in that you're participating in thousands of auctions daily and you have the blockchain integration aspect involved, which therefore makes the whole transactional aspect of things much more seamless on our end. Does this run on Ethereum? Yes, currently it does. Um, planning on utilizing a more efficient blockchain if Ethereum 2.0 doesn't roll out by the time that we launch the app. Okay, cool. Interesting. Would it be something maybe that you guys build on your own? Just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, could be. Could be. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I I think a lot of people are, are starting to go that direction. Um, mm -hmm. That's interesting. So in terms of the details from last night, because I want to focus on that. So did the auction actually take place? Was a winner announced? What, how did that work? Because the app hasn't launched, so I guess it's in beta. Like, how did, how did that work? Correct, the auction has not yet been launched. Um, okay. So we're, we're waiting on it. We wanna be executing properly and we want people to be patient with this just because people don't really realize that three months ago, we were nothing. And three months later, we're sponsoring Logan Paul for the biggest pay-per-view event in history. And I'm in Miami on the floor with a bunch of super good people. And we have hundreds of people walking up to us because they know who we are, whether they're in crypto or not. Right. Oh, I've heard of you. Oh, I've heard of this is a good thing to look into, whatever. And for me, that alone is the biggest success because we're building our brand in this space. We're building our brand so that when we can launch our app, everyone knows about Logan Paul's auction. Everyone knows about so-and-so's auction. I can't drop any more names tonight um, because there are more people that we have in line. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have access to millions of potential customers, millions of customers who are going to be downloading the app, 
obviously uh, buying these super bid to participate in the auction itself. And, you know, again, this whole ecosystem is designed so that people are satisfied so that people like myself who are working on the product is satisfied so that users are satisfied. People that are participating in the auctions are satisfied and also that influencers are satisfied. So yeah, it's a bunch of fun. Right. So Max, it's interesting because when you say satisfied, you know, the users are satisfied, the influencers are satisfied. It sounds like you guys are solving a problem that other platforms like Instagram and TikTok are kind of uh, mm -hmm. not solving. So what, what, why did you guys create Superbit in the first place? I mean, obviously there's a problem there that had to be solved. Why? Great question. Um, so it was also quite simple how we came about this idea. We actually saw a lot of demand for, for just auctions, period. We noticed that a lot of influencers were, were going onto Instagram or even going onto TikTok and going on Instagram Live and auctioning off things that were in their own room. And we didn't think that this was the best process to do this. We also understand that people are in need of this like connection with people currently because of obviously because of COVID as well. So we thought, what if we could create something where influencers could engage directly with their fans in a decentralized way, utilizing the blockchain while leveraging the great auctioning capabilities of eBay. So that's where we came up with this TikTok eBay combination. Um, and that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds amazing. Um, I'm going to take some questions from the audience because we have a few of those coming in now. Um, Philip is asking, when can we see the tokenomics for the app? Uh, the, the general tokenomics are already listed on our website. The token flow on the app, again, is just as I mentioned. Um, you use it, you use the token for the app itself. So in terms of token flow, um, that's what it is. There's nothing outside of that currently. So if you do go to our website, there's a tokenomics page. You can find all the information there. Cool. Okay, awesome. This is an interesting question that I also wanted to discuss as well. Mehdi is asking, so there will be experiences, NFTs, and physical goods to bid on. We kind of discussed that, but I'll just let you maybe detail that a bit more, Max. Definitely. So yes, we're hitting all three. Um, we're getting we're having people reach out to us who are NFT artists who want to do auctions on our app. Um, we're being hit up by various influencers who want to auction off items that they own, experiences that they want to run. So we're kind of covering all grounds here. And the beauty of that is it's not just these, you have to come on, you can only do one thing. We're trying to make it very dynamic where if you do do an experience, you can also do an NFT. Or if you are participating in an auction and you make a bid, Maybe you can get an NFT reward even if you lose the auction from your in, your favorite influencer. So again, this whole gamifying aspect of things is something that we're trying to capitalize on. And the only way that we can do that is if we do cover all these three grounds. Cool, yeah, that makes sense. What I wanted to add on to that question was um, the physical and the digital. That's really interesting. We're seeing that a lot now. So if there was a, a digital NFT that was associated with a physical item, how does that item, are you going to ship that item to the person who wins the auction? I mean, how does that work? Because I feel like that kind of opens up a few other challenges. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So currently we're not a custodial service for shipping things for people. Um, so if you're going to do an auction on our app and you don't actually come through, we'll have a rating system similar to eBay, similar to Uber. If you do mess something up, you don't actually come through and ship your item, then no one's going to buy anything from you ever again. So it's that's where the rating system is is very, very important. Um, and this is what we're planning on implementing. If there do comes a time where we realize that it would be beneficial for us to implement our own logistics platform and we have you know shipping planned out for, for various people, then we will do that. However, currently we're not planning on it. There are some people where we might consider doing that. Some large people like Logan, if he wants to do something crazy, we might consider working with him to help out with the logistics of, of shipping an item. But currently, uh, it's not in our plan. Yeah, I also think because influencers are doing the auctions, I mean, it's probably pretty known which influencers would be responsible enough to actually send physical items to those winners. Um, I, I don't know if you're doing any other procedures like KYC for influencers, or if you're just kind of doing it on the fact that they're influencers and well known. There will be KYC, um, definitely, because it's a requirement, especially that we have the cryptocurrency involved.
thing, basic, yeah. you know, KYC requirements across the globe for anyone that wants to actually auction off items um, similar with users who want to buy the token. Got it. Very cool. Okay, I'm taking another question from the audience. Keep it coming, guys. We're getting a lot um, in right now. So Wally is asking, will the app be available on both Apple and Android devices? Yep, they will. Cool. And it, that, and you said that's going to be in about, what, three months for both devices? Yes. We're shooting for that timeline. Um, obviously, things could change. Uh, but we're looking at Q3 for a public alpha launch and somewhere in Q4 for the actual app launch on the market for everyone to download. Sounds good. And just on that note, Paul is asking, how far have you progressed with app development? I don't know if you want to or if you can detail any more information regarding that. We're past the MVP stage. We have a beta that's in private testing right now. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, Rachel, we're having people test this. Um, just developers who actually know the technical ins and outs of things, of app development, testing the product currently. But we're planning on going out to the public within this month um, so that our community members can can go ahead and test it as well. Cool. So I think that answers a question from Jen Kerr, who's asking when the community will be able to test the alpha version. You basically just yes. answered that. <laughs> yes, Jen Kerr. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm wondering, so the people that are testing the app now, or in your opinion, actually, what have been the biggest challenges so far that still need to kind of be worked out in order for this app to really resonate with the mainstream? Gamification um, is the biggest thing. We want this to be an app where people actually pull it up and they're instantly consumed and captured by the content that we're presenting them because content for us is everything. So if we have some influencer who's coming on and the content is subpar, um, it's not going to attract the user. So we need to figure out how we can present information in the most captivating way to keep people on the app. And that's the problem that we're dealing with right now. Um, but obviously, we'll get there and we'll solve it. Right. And I'm assuming, I don't know if you can talk a little bit about like the UI or anything like that. I don't know if it resembles Instagram or TikTok or Clubhouse even in any way, but I'm assuming it's going to be very user friendly. Correct. I actually have it on my phone, unfortunately. I wish I could show you, but I, I just can't. Um, mm -hmm. But we will obviously show you once the public beta is released. Um, but yes, it is super captivating like TikTok currently is. We don't have like the constant moving uh, graphics yet um, where you just pull up and someone's already playing a video. But we do have it almost like Instagram where you're scrolling through and you're seeing different auctions and it's categorized. So you can filter through gaming, through lifestyle, through sports. Um, so that's where we are right now. But again, these things could change as we do develop the product. Very cool. And has it been, I mean, I'm sure you guys are talking to a number of influencers to get them, you know, to do more events like the one you guys sponsored last night, the big fight here mm -hmm. in Miami. Um, mm -hmm. When you mention cryptocurrency and blockchain to influencers, how do they react to that? Are they super interested or are they, you know, do, do they think it's too confusing and maybe they shy away from the idea of being on Superbed? What are your thoughts on that? They are instantly interested. Um, when we pitch this item as a social media auctioning app, people say, oh, cool. But then when we say, we're also a cryptocurrency company and you also use our token for, for bids in the app, they say, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. So we're taking two of the greatest things in kind of the influencer and crypto hype worlds right now and bridging those gaps. So I'd say that we couldn't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Um. And then my next question is, who's your target audience? Because, you know, last night you sponsored the fight. And so that's mm -hmm. obviously a very targeted audience. But are you also looking at like fashion influencers and tech influencers? Or, you know, are you looking at the whole picture here? Or are you guys just kind of pinpointing specific areas with influencers? I mean, there's there's food influencers. And, and how, mm -hmm. how is that going to work with so many different um, sectors? This is, this is a very, very good question um, because this is something that we were struggling with when we, first, when we first started the project because we only had around 10 core team members. And our initial idea was to basically go out to whoever we could find because we were nobody, um, cold calling, cold emailing, just hustling to get people to, to get back to us. 
And now we're at a point where we have enough credibility where we can actually focus on one category. So the category which we've almost selected um, is lifestyle. So people like Logan Paul is a perfect example because Logan Paul is known across the world. He's not just a guy who's gonna be doing experience auctions. He can also do physical goods. He can also do NFTs. So while we do get connected with a lot of rappers, with artists, with people you know, of all different backgrounds, um, we are working with them in the background. But from a promotional perspective, we're more interested in focusing on the lifestyle um, influencers. What we do, what we are doing is working on signing contracts with people across the board so that when we launch the app, we have one month of amazing auctions. Every single day we're running an auction, all you know, organized by the Superbid, Superbid team with influencers that we've partnered with so that people can come on our app and know that okay, today we have this auction, but tomorrow we're gonna have that. And the next day we're gonna have that. And it's just constantly information coming through. And something that we expect obviously is that these influencers will greatly enjoy their experience and they're gonna come back. So after that point where we're almost facilitating the initial launch, we're gonna have people that are just coming to us and we don't have to facilitate anything because anyone is just gonna be able to go on the app and launch the auction themselves. So that's the beauty with it is once we do get this up, up and running, we're going to create like the most sustainable, um, the most sustainable app for us and source of income um, for us to be able to focus on further developments on the product and then for, for, for uh, further developments within the Escape Velocity company, meaning exploring other cryptocurrency products as well. Cool. OK, so I'm assuming I mean, I know you can't talk about upcoming sponsorships just yet, but I'm assuming now we have an idea that it's going to be focused on lifestyle events and, and lifestyle yes. influencers. Yes. I mean, you'll see, uh, you'll see us around. Um, you'll see us at many more events outside of the Logan Paul event. When we went to this, we didn't really understand how uh, engaged people would be with us. But once people started to come to us and we didn't have to go to them, I realized that we're downplaying our capabilities and we're downplaying where we currently are because people already know who we are. So we're planning on doing a bunch more activities just like the one with Logan Paul with various influencers. And we're also planning some more absurd stuff, which we're going to be launching this month and everyone will find out about it. It has nothing to do with influencers. It has everything to do with, you know, creating community, with creating hype um, and building our brand. Yeah. Wow. It's so exciting. Um, one of the audience members also seems excited. Jen Kerr is saying hot air balloon with super bid logo flying from one city to another. <laughs> Actually, Jenker, why don't you organize that for us? Maybe we can do it from London all the way to the US and you can ride on it. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, and then also Jenker is asking, when will there be an expansion to Asia and the Middle East? Good question. Um, we have various sources who are helping us uh, decide whether or not it makes sense to do a marketing campaign in Asia and the Middle East, because right now we are laser focused on finding you know native english speakers because these this is like the most con common language in the world so we want to knock down barriers we want to knock down barriers we want to access asia and the, and the middle east but we also want to do it in a strategic way that isn't actually de uh, delaying our development for example if we have to translate our website to a million different languages it's going to delay our development so we're just focusing on how we can actually fit that in um, but we do have connections we do have the ability to go and release this marketing campaign um, right now there's nothing final, but if we decide that we should do it, then, then we will. Mm -hmm. Got it. Cool. We're getting more questions. So thank you guys. Just keep them coming our way. Um, I'm going to take another question from an audience member to fall is asking, how will you compete against Ethereum as they have similar projects? That's a great question. So Ethereum is just a blockchain. We're actually not competing with Ethereum. Ethereum Max, no, um, because Superbit is leveraging that technology, right? Just like all the other dApps that are built on Ethereum. Um, Superbit is utilizing the Ethereum blockchain to launch the token and to enable bids within the app. So while there are other similar projects out there in this space, specifically regarding the NFT industry, there's nothing like Superbit where you can do this combination of NFTs, uh, influencer auctions, for experiences and also for physical goods while combining that socially engaging aspect of it as well, where you're able to create a profile, you're able to chat with your influencers, you're able to do a live stream. So all of these things combined don't really make it competition against these other projects like Ethereum Max. 
we are here to augment the space. We're here to give influencers another avenue through which they can make passive income, essentially. So we're just trying to make influencers and other people's lifestyles e easier. In fact, when we started this project, um, I quickly realized that since I'm, I'm younger than some of my teammates, that as we transition into a world that is more focused on artificial intelligence, more focused on automation, people aren't gonna have the same jobs that I had when I was growing up. People aren't gonna have those physical labor jobs anymore. So you can already start seeing a lot of kids nowadays may not have those hard skills anymore, but they do have insane skills in attracting an audience. They have insane skills in getting millions of followers like that. So there are gonna be more people that are shifting there every day, day to day, from this normal traditional thing that we've been a part of for years into something that's more virtual, like Instagram, like TikTok, like trying to monetize your lifestyle through apps like this. And I think that it's gonna be commonplace, whether it's for good or for bad. Um, and that's why we are essentially a part of this is because we know that it's a market that no one's tapping into um, that we need to leverage right now. Yeah, Max, you bring up so many good points. It's interesting because I've been at Bitcoin 2021 both days, as I'm sure you were also. And uh, there were a lot of TikTokers there. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's I hadn't seen that really at other events and conferences. And now it's a thing. I mean, people introduce themselves as, hey, I'm a TikToker. And I've got yeah. all these followers. And it's so impressive because you know, I'm not a TikToker. And I just think it's awesome to see how these TikTokers are influencing in the crypto and blockchain space. I mean, they've got so many followers. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I have respect for people like that who actually are, you know, when you meet them in person, they are who they actually seem like within their own virtual universe. Yeah. I think that oftentimes some influencers may not actually have the same persona in their uh, virtual world they do in real life and that's perfectly okay to keep those things separate um but what i do respect is people that are hustling to make to, to really make an impact and to essentially yeah. influence if it's for a positive reason most of this is for entertainment right so people are enjoying the content that people are putting out and there's really nothing wrong with that um outside of people needing to take their eyes off their phones and you know look at the world because it's beautiful um, but it doesn't surprise me that there were TikTokers there. There were influencers, you know, a number of influencers at this fight and they were walking around with their posses. And that was just a very uh, interesting thing to see because it's not something that you're used to. Um, but I respect it. Right. Definitely. Um, I also want to, and you kind of touched on this a bit, but I think a really important aspect of super bid is the decentralization and removing the middleman and allowing um, influencers and users to earn while they use the app. Because I know, uh, you know, with boxing, for instance, there's these boxing matchmakers and, you know, there's a portion of, of revenue that a third party takes. But mm -hmm. I feel like Superbid um, kind of fixes that problem. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And I should have touched on this earlier when you asked me why we created this app and why it's better than other social media apps out there like Instagram is that with Instagram, they actually take a 50, 50 split. So whatever you make on the app, Instagram gets 50%. Same mm -hmm. with Twitch. Um, and TikTok is also similar. So we want it to be an app where we're democratizing this almost completely. We want to come to a point in our business model where we're only taking less than 1% of the proceeds from the auction so that we can use that to actually, sustain our company. Um, mm -hmm. Because if we do reach where we want to reach, which is having millions of people downloading the app and thousands of auctions running every day, we will be able to achieve sustainable income by only charging such a small percent like 1%, um, whereas the rest of it will go to the influencer. So this yeah. is a huge advantage for influencers. I know that it doesn't actually even exist with uh, you know, the NFT space. A lot of NFT auctioning platforms take a much larger chunk than 1%. So it's not really a problem that we're solving. It's just something that I think should be there regardless, because it's not while we are working, you know, our asses off to create this amazing product, it's not our content. And we want influencers to understand that. And if they do understand that we're charging, you know, such a small amount and we're not trying to get rich quick from this, um, that they'll be much more attracted to using our platform versus others that are out there. Yeah, it's it's amazing. That's I'm so excited for this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a few more questions from the audience. Let's see here. Uh, Tufal is asking, are there any plans to lock liquidity? 
liquidity is already locked. Um, locked for, I believe it's five plus years. We're planning on dispersing tokens over the next 10 to 20 years. We actually, when we started our project, we didn't lock our liquidity. We figured that being non-anonymous figures in the background would be enough for people, but it wasn't. So we decided to reach out to Team Finance, the Trust Swap team, which is a very common liquidity locking platform in the crypto space. And we worked with them to create like a really nice scheme for liquidity locking so that it was dispersed to us every, first of, First, it was every quarter, now it's gonna be every year. So we have almost 95% at this point of our liquidity locked. You can check it out on Etherscan. We have both contracts there for everyone to see. Awesome. And then Wally is asking, how long do you plan on keeping staking available? Is that is that a feature yet or? Yes, it is a feature. Um, and it's something that we haven't decided on yet because this is not the essence of Supervid. This is not why Supervid is here. Um, while we do want to reward people for being a part of our community, this is not the point of it. So that's why we wanna be implementing these gamification reward aspects that are actually on the app versus doing it offline, such as what we currently have with our reward system. Cool. Um, I'm just curious, actually a question just came to my mind. Are you guys, are there plans for a web application? Like, I mean, is this all just gonna be something on the phone or are you guys gonna have a website actually where people can, can go on the website as well? Yes, app obviously is our main priority, but the website is something that we will implement as well. Cool. Uh, Max, are you able to talk a little bit more about future plans and the roadmap ahead also? Definitely. Could... Um, another great question. So within the next month, we will definitely have more ambassadors announced who are partners with our project. We will also have this massive phase two of our global marketing campaign launched. We just started phase one, meaning we reached millions of people at, our, at the fight last night. What we have coming next, we'll probably reach even more and we're gonna be competing with the big guys now. So that will be happening soon. We also have in Q3, a new exchange listing coming. We'll have the public beta launch. We'll have new collaborations with crypto influencers who may even run auctions within the app but will be primarily used for promotional aspects. We'll have our public alpha launched. We'll have our first influencer auctions launched, um, hopefully in Q3, but maybe Q4. And then we'll eventually have the public full up, full capability app launched in Q4. So that's just a general rough idea of what the roadmap looks like over the next coming months. Very cool, that's exciting. Um, An audience keeps sending us your questions. We've still got some time here with Max. Um, I'm gonna take another question from the audience member, Jen Kerr. They're asking, could you tell me more about the lock tokens? Are you able to, to elaborate on that or did we kind of touch on everything? Uh, we pretty much touched on everything. Um, again, everything is visible on the blockchain. So if you do go to Etherscan or even go to Team Finance, you can see exactly how many tokens are locked and at which rate they're being dispersed. Um, also on our tokenomics page, there's information about how we are actually going to be releasing those tokens over time. A number of it will go to charity. Some of it will go towards liquidity for exchanges and some of it will go towards liquidity for the actual app itself. Okay, so so David is asking, will holders get some percentage of the transactions? That's something that we want to implement. Um, there are obviously legal ramifications that we need to overcome in order to do so because we are going to be a global company and an app that anyone is going to be able to use. And until crypto isn't accepted as a mainstream transactional currency, um, there are obviously some hurdles that we have to get through and we are going to be working on actually defining some of those hurdles. So one of our initial ideas was actually to reward people that are holders of our token within the app with proceeds from auctions. So let's say Logan Paul does an auction. We close the auction. Logan Paul is making 95%. Superbit is making 1%. And then the actual holders of our token are making 4%. So that was uh, just one of the ideas that we had, but we are not yet at the stage where we're implementing it formally. But we, we will keep you in the loop as we do uh, develop and decide on whether or not we're going to be doing that. Awesome. Okay, uh, this is also an interesting question from an audience member. Tufal is asking, you have 6,547 holders currently. What are your expectations in terms of numbers for the holders of Superbid? Unfortunately, I cannot state what I think it's gonna go where I think it's gonna go. I mean, I want this to work out. I want people to know about us. That's the most important thing to me. Got it, yeah, makes sense. 
And then Jen Kerr is asking, tell us something about your charity program. Okay, uh, another great question. Um, something that we decided on early was that to get charity, we don't want to get to give our money away to know where our money is actually going. So the whole idea of this is to almost start our own charity program and partner with different organizations which are well trusted in this space um, where we can actually know for certain where our funds are going. So some of the uh, categories that we are really focusing on are obviously education, food insecurity, and, and the environment. So these are two things that are three things that we're, that we're very passionate about that we want to actually help uh, solve in any way possible. And we feel that just because we're able to do so much in the past three months that we can actually do so much and go so much further with our own charity program. So while we will be partnering with other organizations along the way, the charity, pro the, the main charity, I guess, that uh, that we would be donating through would be Superbid itself, so our company itself. Cool, that's awesome. I didn't know about the charity program, so very cool stuff. Um, we've got another question from an audience member. Mehdi is asking, will we be able to bid on game cosmetic items like skins in CSGO? Another great question, and yes, it's part of our plan. Um, we're speaking with gaming organizations, which are actually well-versed in the CSGO world. So while it's not our current focus, um, as I mentioned, we are laser focused on lifestyle influencers and others that are coming our way. Gaming is definitely something that we are considering for implementation in the future. So something like a skin in CSGO could be something that you see. Um, with regard to gaming, something that's more uh, feasible and understandable perhaps might be partnering with a uh, uh, gaming influencer or a professional gamer who can run an experience auction on our app for actually participating in some tournament with him or doing a 1v1 or even doing a training session with him or her. So that is some of the ideas that you might have around you know, ga a gamer running an auction through the app, but something like a skin in CSGO may also be um, an option within, within Supervid. Very cool. So Max, I just have a random question for you, unrelated to Superbid, but I guess kind of related. You were at the fight last night. Can you tell us a little bit, like what was the high point for you? I, I wasn't there. And so I'm just curious to know like your thoughts on it. Uh, I walked up to a photographer wearing a yellow vest and he knew who we were. That was wow. one of the highlights for me, to be honest, because that's when it clicked. That's when I said, we're becoming a global company. It's happening very fast. And when I saw Logan Paul walk out, it crystallized things for me. I just said, we're here. I was obviously a little bit nervous for the whole event just because I don't know where we're gonna go from here. I don't know where we're gonna go after millions of people are, are viewing you know, the Superbid name. I actually checked my email this morning and had three times the amount of emails that I usually have because people wow. noticed our logo. Yeah. So it was amazing, the whole event for me. Um, but I would say that the, the, the main highlight was that I got to go with some community members that we gave tickets to, and also some of my family members. And they were walking around with super big gear. And it was just like the happiest sight for me because they were all advocating for our project. They were speaking with famous people across the board. g Easy was standing right next to me. We met this influencer, Harry Tate, who has a couple hundred thousand followers who we were speaking with. We yeah. were there with a number of different rappers as well. And I had my family and community members there advocating for us the entire time. And just to see that, to understand how dedicated people actually are to this project outside of the team members really made me realize that this is just a different kind of crypto movement. It's just different. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so huge what you guys did last night. I mean, he was literally wearing super bid clothing. Like all of his yeah. gear was super bid, right? Like everything. His hat too. Out. He had That's this hat on. If you noticed, he put this hat on right after the end of the fight and he did a press release with this hat. That's amazing, Max. By the way, I'm still in Miami. If you guys have any extra hats or swag, let me know. And also, I, I I'm, sure that, I'm sure that, okay, cool. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll come by and get one, but I'm sure the audience would also want a hat at some point. I don't know if you guys are, are doing any giveaways, but that's some really, really awesome uh, gear you have. Yeah, let's do some giveaways. If you want to help coordinate that, I have so many. I have so many articles of clothing. I need to give it away. I want people to be repping this everywhere: the gyms, the pool, 
wherever you go, I want people wearing super grid. So I'll definitely give some to you and I'll definitely give some to anyone who reaches out to me and wants it. Thanks, Max. As as I'm, gonna, it. I'm gonna be wearing that to the gym next time. I'm really excited. Please. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Anyways, back to an audience question. Um, David is asking any burns over time from the transactions planned. The first on the website said it would be 2.5% burning. Yeah. So our initial idea was to create a burning mechanism so that every time a transaction was made, there was a certain amount of tokens that were burned. Um, we, the reason why we decided to remove that from the website is just because our plans are changing and we don't know what the exact percentage will be. We don't even know whether or not we're going to be implementing a burning mechanism when we actually launch the app. It might be a future capability, um, which we're not exploring for that initial version. However, it's still something that's on the table. It's still something that we're considering. So uh, again, we'll keep everyone informed on whether or not we decide to do such such a thing in the future. Cool. And then uh, Wally is just expressing his excitement for the project, which that makes sense. It's exciting. He's saying, <laughs> win moon, win moon, win Lambo. Let's go amazing project, amazing people, super bid. Thank you so much. So the funny thing is, is that these are common memes, right? In the crypto industry, when Lambo, when moon, uh, I'll just give you a hint. We're, we're going to bring these things into reality and I'll leave you with that. Awesome. The suspense is killing us. Um, cool. Okay, Max. So we are, we're running a little bit out of time. Uh, audience, if you have any other questions, definitely send them now. Um, and Max, I just wanted to ask you, did you have any additional comments that you want to add that we might not have touched on? Yeah, I mean, anyone who is in this current live stream, I want you guys to join our Telegram chat um, and I want you to ask questions because we have the most dedicated community com community members out of any group that I've ever been in crypto. I've been in, involved in cryptocurrency for the past five, six years, joining Telegram groups, chatting it up. And this is the most engaged group that I've found. So if you go to our website, you'll find all of our social media. You'll find our Telegram. Follow us, like our stuff. Um, and make sure to stay in touch with me because I'm also active in that chat and I'm willing to answer questions whenever any of you guys have them. Yeah. And I think the audience is kind of excited now for gear. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Max, what is, um, if, if they wanted to reach out to you on telegram or Twitter, what are those handles? You can just go to, um, our chat. So it's, let me get the exact name for you. Sure. Um, if you look up SuperVid on telegram, you'll find us. And then you can just tag an admin and they will get in touch with me. Very cool. Awesome. And I'm sure you guys are going to be very responsive. It sounds like it's a really great community that really, um, you know, respects those people reaching out to them. Absolutely. We're nonstop, nonstop grind. My team is entirely in Poland. So when I wake up, it's their afternoon. When I go to sleep, they're waking up. So it's cool. the perfect combination because we really don't have any time where someone is not working on this project, where someone is not chatting in the Telegram. So any any questions, any concerns, please voice them in our, in our chat. Um, we'll get back to you like ASAP. Cool. Max, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You're awesome. I'm going to come stalk you now to get some gear. <laughs> um, and I just want to say thank you to our audience for joining us. It's always so fun doing these AMAs and just remember, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to continue to have these, um, all the time. So thanks again, Max. And thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that I can join you. I hope to come back soon. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.